Gamer Poet strives to create the most informative and easy to navigate tutorials available, driven by viewer feedback and contribution. What some would do in multiple videos, we do in one. Since the videos are packed full of so much information, a lot of which the general viewer may not even care to know, navigation is provided to accommodate the individual as much as possible. Navigation is appropriately labeled within the sidebar via annotations to each major section. Occasionally, if and when it's needed, a sliding tray will drop down from the top right of the user interface. This has been implemented to allow viewers to skip over information that does not pertain to them in a progressive manner without having to check the video description or without having to guess while dragging on the timeline. However, the video description does provide navigation to every section of the tutorial step by step and I recommend that it be utilized on subsequent viewings. Finally, video platforms such as YouTube are subject to change. The GamerPoet's video interface has been organized in a way that hopes to weather future amendments within the platform. Though, the older this video gets, the more potential there is for the annotations to be hindered. Billboards are 2D images of trees that are needed to generate tree lod. Creating the best and most appropriate billboards for your personal load order will assure that you have better looking trees in the distance, trees that match their close-up counterparts more closely, and in many situations, more distant trees where appropriate. Tree lod can be generated with X lod gen or din do lod as long as the vanilla game and or specific billboards exist. The latest version of NIFScope is used to view and manipulate meshes, but is not necessarily the only program that can be used to do this. I've read that you can also use the creation kit for this process, but I'm currently unable to do it myself other than using NIFScope. While this guide uses Photoshop for some of the necessary, yet minimal, artwork tasks, you can also use GIMP, Paint.net, or a combination of both and or other image manipulation programs. The more features a program offers, the better you will be able to create the perfect billboard of your personal tastes. Links to all of these programs, and others, can be found in the video description. The TreeLod Billboard Creator Tool is used to capture the 2D image needed for the DDS billboard file to be created. We will need XEdit to get the mesh form IDs, to extract files from the BSA archives, as well as to split the TreeLod Atlas, all of which is needed to create our billboards. Mod Organizer Users I recommend that you do not use Mod Organizer for this process. The requirements are the same for us, however, there are extra steps that need to be taken when using Mod Organizer for this process to work. For those of you who insist on using MO, I have created a section at the end of this tutorial to show you the troubleshooting steps that I had to figure out, with the help of others, to make everything in the guide work. Again, I highly recommend, for the sake of simplicity, to not use Mod Organizer for this process. It's not necessary, and you will save yourself a lot of time by not using it for the guide. The only thing that Mod Organizer users will have to do initially, meaning right now, other than what is explained throughout this guide, is to place the plugins and asset files of the mods or official updates in DLC that you plan on creating billboards for into the data folder. As launching XEdit outside of MO will not allow XEdit to recognize the files that are stored within MO's virtual data folder. So if Mod Organizer is your mod manager of choice, as it is mine, be sure to place any mods that you are creating billboards for into the data folder. Navigate to the XEdit executable. Launch XEdit. Double click on the plugin that you plan on generating billboards for. Locate the plugin in the left pane window that contains the mesh that you want to create a billboard for. Expand the plugin by clicking on the plus sign to its left. Scroll down, locate and expand the tree section. Click on the tree record that you want to create the billboard for. For our example, I will use Tree Pine Forest 01. In the view window on the right, locate the model field, select the NIF file path, hold the control key, and push C to copy it. Now, hold the control key again and push F3 to bring up the assets browser window. Paste the NIF file path into the filter at the top of the window. Right-click the file within the file name window, select Saves As, and choose a location to save the file. This will automatically extract a single file from the archive without having to impact the entire thing. Open NIFScope. Select File. Select Open. Navigate to the tree mesh that we just extracted using XEdit and double-click it. 
When adjusting lighting, you want to keep the brightness and darkness relatively the same for each billboard that you are creating. The overall tree lot brightness can be adjusted upon generation via Dindu Lod or X-Edit Lod Gen. The following steps are suggested by Pale Rider and the reasons behind the suggestions are given. Select the light bulb icon at the top of NIF Scope. Frontal. Select the frontal button to disable it. Disabling frontal will remove the self-shadowing as it will look strange when viewed during different times of day. While the rendered trees are being affected by the position of the sun, your static LOD will not match. Light Source Intensity Decrease this setting so that the right edge of the slider block is in line with the left edge of the other slider blocks beneath it. Without doing this, specific regions of the tree will appear to be highlighted. While this may look good on some trees, when you have hundreds of tree lod with the same repetitive pattern, it can become distracting and immersion breaking. Ambient Light Intensity Increase to compensate for decreasing light source intensity. Move the slider as far to the right as the light source intensity slider was moved to the left. Feel free to play around with these settings and the others to your liking. The TreeLod Billboard Creator tool is going to take a screenshot of what is visible in your render window. It will do this to create the actual billboard. To prepare the window to get the best image, open Options. Select Render. Deactivate all of the checkboxes beneath Startup Defaults. Select Anti-Aliasing and set to Off. Save the file. Close NIF Scope. Reopen NIF Scope. This will have removed some of the objects from screen that we do not want visible when taking the screenshot, as well as to help keep the colors from bleeding into the background, which will subtly distort the edges, or add a strange outline to the image. Maximize NIF scope and expand the render window to be as large as it can be. Select View. Select Show and deactivate Block List, Block Details, Header, Archive Browser, KFM, and Inspect. Select the X in any of the sub-windows, if any, are still visible. This will allow for a larger image, as well as for a better quality image by disabling block details. More important than it sounds, adjust the size and rotation of the image. The larger the image, the higher the resolution. What you are seeing on screen now is what you will be seeing in-game later. Make sure that you rotate the image perfectly to your liking and that the entire image is in view. Use the view boxes if you need to reset the image's position so that it's being viewed from the proper direction. You don't want a slanted or off-center image. Select the Perspective or Orthogonal View icon box so that Orthogonal View is in effect. This will allow for a better image. Deselect the Show Access gizmo as well as the other buttons in its group to assure that the rest of the visible guidelines and wireframes are removed if they aren't already. With NIF Scope still maximized, launch the TreeLod Billboard Creator Tool. With nothing other than NIF Scope in the Creator Tool window visible, push the Enter key. The preview.dds file, which is the actual billboard, will be generated and placed into the same folder as the tree lot executable, the folder that you installed the Creator Tool to. For some additional information regarding the game Oblivion, view the tree lot billboard Creator Nexus page linked in the description. The next piece of our billboard is a text file that needs to be created and stored alongside the preview.dds file that was just generated. Even though it's a text file, it is reminiscent of an any file and acts the same way. The text file that we are going to create will tell xedit lod gen and or dindu lod the proper width and the height of the model, as well as to inform the user of which model the settings will be applied to. To create this text file, we need to split the tree's atlas. To split the tree's atlas, locate and launch xedit. Activate only the plugins for the tree lod that needs to be split. After xedit background loader has finished, right click the plugin in the left pane. Select Other. Hold the Shift key and select Generate Lod. If you do not hold down Shift, you will not receive the Split Lod Atlas option in the next step. At the Lod Gen Options window, select World Spaces to Generate Lod for by activating the appropriate checkboxes. If you aren't sure which checkbox to activate, you can select them all. Just note that the more options that are activated, the longer the process will take. Deactivate the Objects Lod option, activate the Trees Lod option, select Split Lod Atlas. When the Atlas has been split, select Cancel to not generate anything else and close X Edit. Navigate to the game's data folder. The folder that we are after is the newly generated, or merged, Textures folder. From the Textures folder, navigate to Terrain, Lod Gen, the Atlas Split folder, and the folder with the name of the plugin. Locate the text file that corresponds with the name of the mesh that we created the billboard for. In my case, I need the text file that corresponds with Tree Pine Forest 01. 
Copy the text file and paste it on the desktop as we will need it again in a moment. If you are creating billboards for a customized tree, one that has an entirely new mesh than the vanilla game has, such as some of the trees from Skyrim Flora Overhaul, you will have to calculate the text file differently. While not exact, this method should get you pretty close to where we want to be. Open NIFScope. Load the mesh. In the block list window, select the main tree node, then look in the block details window and assure that translation settings are set to 0.0. .0. Assure that the rotation is set to 0.0, .0 for each of its settings, and then assure that the scale is set to 1.0. Next, with the main tree node still highlighted, select the vertex icon on the menu above. In the render window, select the topmost vertices. This will highlight the selected vertices in the block details window. Write down the highlighted Z dimension. In my example, Z equals 2499 if we round up the decimal. Next, zoom in within the render window and select the lowest vertices. This has a dimension of negative 66 if we round up the decimal. Adding the two numbers together, we end up with a final height of 2565. You can then do the same with the outermost vertices to calculate the width. Open or create the text document that goes along with the DDS billboard file and enter the proper values. You can see from the text file that we generated by splitting the atlas, and using this method, we have gotten within 10 units of the actual size, which in most cases won't even be noticeable. If your model has a negative pivot point, as our example does, which is negative 66, after adding your values to the text file, also add a new line, shift Z equals negative 66, or whatever your amount is, to compensate for it. The final step in preparing the billboard is to name it appropriately and sort it into the proper folder structure so that either Dindulod or XEditLodGen can generate LOD from it. Create a new folder. Name it Textures. Within Textures, create another new folder and name it Terrain. Within Terrain, create another new folder and name it LodGen. Within the LodGen folder, we need to create another folder bearing the name of the plugin, the master record, that originally defines the tree record. Our file for this example, treepineforest01.nif, is associated with the Skyrim ESM. So the name of the folder for this particular mesh will be skyrim.esm. Our folder structure will look like this. Textures, Terrain, Logen, Skyrim ESM. If the mesh that we used came from the Dragonborn DLC, our folder structure would instead look like this. Textures, Terrain, Logen, Dragonborn.esm. And if we were creating a billboard for a mod such as Skyrim Flora Overhaul, our folder structure would look like this. Textures, Terrain, Logen, Skyrim space Flora space Overhaul.esp. Now that we have our folder structure, place the text file from the split atlas, which is now on our desktop, into the final folder of the structure. With the folder that now contains our text file still open, Navigate to our billboard, the preview.dds file, and move it into the same folder. Rename the .dds file by deleting preview and giving it the exact name as the text file. Just be sure to retain the extension .dds and not .txt. The initial treelot billboard creation process is now complete. In the case that you do not like how the LOD appears in game, after generating it via XEdit LOD Gen or Dindu LOD, or if there is a strange colored outline on the LOD images, usually because you forgot to disable anti-aliasing in NIFScope, there are a couple of things that can be done. For this process, I will be using Photoshop. One method, the simplest, is downscaling the image. Resize the image height to 512 pixels and allow the width to auto-calculate. Save the file being sure to retain the DDS format and at least for Skyrim, do not generate MIP maps. Some other ways to remove the outline if you want to have higher resolution tree LOD would be to resize the image to the desired height, 1024 which is 1K, 2048 which is 2K, and so on. And allow the width to auto-calculate as previously done. Then you can A. Use the magic wand or quick selection tool and highlight the image, Right-click on the image and select Refine Edge, and then use the options within to manipulate the edge. Or B, select the Magic Wand tool. In the Tools option bar, be sure to deactivate Sample Only Contiguous Pixels. Click on the white area of the image, or whatever color the outline is, and push the Delete key. And for those who really want to fine-tweak how the law looks, you can do any number of things in Photoshop to manipulate the image. 
With the image selected, you can open the filter options at the top of Photoshop and use one of the Add Noise or Sharpen filters, or both, being aware that too much of either one could make the image much worse instead of better. You could also use the brushes to add variations of colors to certain spots on the image and or hand draw over some of the features that you don't like. Whatever you do, keep in mind that the goal is to have the LOD match the trees that are in the loaded cells as closely as possible while leaving room for the different lighting conditions in-game. The best way to test how your billboard looks in-game is to view it from an unmodded, unless you are creating billboards for a mod, vanilla game point of view. Do not use ENB or shader mods when testing unless you are creating billboards specific for those overlays. Other than creating billboards for every tree in the game, you may want to create them for LOD that is missing altogether or LOD that is mismatched. To figure out what trees do not have LOD generated for them or what trees are mismatched, launch the game. Locate a tree that looks like it doesn't have any LOD generated for it or a tree that has obvious discolored LOD. Open the console. Select a tree with the mouse pointer. Write down the form ID that appears on screen. Exit the game. Open XEdit. Activate the checkboxes for all of the mods that appear. Hold Shift to save time by skipping reference building, as we do not need it here, and select OK. In the Form ID filter at the top left of XEdit, enter the ID that we wrote down a moment ago. Push Enter. This is the tree model that does not have LOD generated for it. From here, you can repeat the tutorial from the Locating and Extracting Meshes section. Here I will mention the issues that come with creating billboards when using Mod Organizer to do so. Missing textures in NIFScope. I've never had this issue when following the steps start to finish in this guide. I did have this issue when extracting BSAs using other methods. When the mesh loads in NIFScope, if the textures are not seen, open Options. Select Settings. Select Resources. With the Pass tab open, select Auto Detect Game Pass. If the path that appears is not correct, select Add Folder and navigate to Steam, Steam Apps, Common, the game title. Highlight the data folder and choose the Select Folder button. Highlight the incorrect path within the Pass tab window and remove folder. Select Apply. Open the Archives tab. Select Auto Detect Archives. If the archives that appear are not correct, select Add Archives. Navigate back to the game's data folder. Instead of trying to figure out which archive holds the textures that you are after, to save time, sort the files by type, hold the Shift key, select the first archive, Still holding Shift, scroll down and select the last archive. Select the Open button, select Apply. When launching XEdit from Mod Organizer, not Mod Organizer 2, the Generate LOD option when attempting to split Atlas will not open if the Have MO Manage Archives option is activated within the Archives tab of the main MO interface. To receive the LOD Gen window, you need to deactivate the BSA option in the MO first and then launch XEdit. You will also have to be sure to reactivate the Have MO Manage Archives option before launching the game later on. With Mod Organizer, I could not split the atlas as the files could not be found even with the Have MO Manage Archives option deactivated. To get around this, I had to unpack the BSA archives that correspond with both the meshes and textures of the trees that I wanted to generate billboards for directly into the game's data folder. I did this by right-clicking on the archive within Mod Organizer's Archives tab and selecting Extract. However, doing this completely negates the quick and easy function of extracting a single file using only XEdit. Our final note for this tutorial, if using Mod Organizer, you need to create an output path for XEdit before splitting the atlas. To do this, you can put the argument right into the arguments field within the Modify Executables window while your version of XEdit is highlighted. Non-Mod Organizer users can also create an output path if they do not wish to have the Atlas files appear in their data folder by creating a shortcut of the XEdit executable, opening properties, and adding it to the target field. I would like to thank all of you for watching this video. Without Pale Rider X's PDF tutorial, I would not have even taken the opportunity to create this video. His guide is what allowed me to initially begin to understand this process better and to have enough confidence to make the tutorial to begin with. So thank you to Pale Rider X.
Another huge thank you to Shesson for once again going over all of my writing, making amendments, and explaining to me why this should be done this way and that should be done that way. And a final thank you to Zalav for also reading over the entire script, making some amendments, and giving me the reasoning behind it. Working with people such as Shesson and Zalav really opened my eyes to how the inner workings of modding, as well as to the inner workings of the modding community, are both established and maintained. I personally do not think that people such as Shesson, Zalav, and many others in the community get as much credit as they deserve. Without the work that they do behind the scenes, again, as well as others, we would not have thousands of mods being created by multiple authors for multiple games. These are the people who create the tools, modify them, and make them more accessible to the entire community so that we can all utilize them, create better mods, and allow others to use those mods. So a final big thank you to you guys again, to all of you out there who know how much work you are putting in even if you aren't being credited or recognized for it. I thank you all. As always, I am Michael of Gamer Poets. Thank you for watching.